Hi everyone, welcome to a new Tetra Guide 5, introducing Tetras number 76 to 85. Once again, here are a few new Terracins and some of the first videos of totally new species, as well as a few fish that have been around for a while, but maybe don't get exported often enough for everyone to know them. If you've missed parts 1 to 4 of this guide, there are links in the video's description. We see less new fish from Peru these days, so when there are a few new fish, it is always exciting. Today's first fish is Chirodon ortegai. It was described way back in 1981 from the Rio Pachitea, where these fish were likely caught as well. Once settled in, their background color changes from gray to a bright yellow, and especially the males have very unusual body shape and that unique horizontal black line above the anal fin. We don't often see Chirodon in the hobby, but I think this is the most interesting one of them, even though there's a chance it will not be exported often. To my knowledge, this is the first video of live specimens. Axorodia stigmatis is exported from the Rio Negro in Brazil, but never in large numbers. While the Axorodia from Colombia are common in the hobby and easy to find, this species, which is a little bit larger, is really rare in the hobby. Unlike the Colombian Axorodia, they are quite territorial and frequently bite each other, and they do not seem to school the way the Colombian ones do. For an aquarium with tiny leaf litter fish like small Epistogramma and Pozzilio charax weitzmani, this is the ideal community fish. Dominant males have a more red-orange tail stripe that glows with intense color and subdued lighting. If you like really small fish, I think this is a species worth looking for. Professor Burkhan reticulatus has been described over 100 years ago, in 1911. Because this fish occurs in river basins close to Rio de Janeiro, it almost never gets exported, even though they are very beautiful, and like many fish from southern Brazil, they are also hardy fish that may well breed outside in North America summer months. The brightly colored ocellum behind the operculum of this fish is among the most intense of any tetra species. These fish are a little bit territorial and do not form a tight school, a bit like the common serpe tetra. Professor Brucon minor has been around just as long, but with so many of these signal dorsal tetras, they do not stand out enough to get noticed. Their body is slender and the dorsal fin is not extended like in some species in this group. All of these Hephesobrucons occur in big schools in nature, and to fully appreciate their territorial fights, they need to be in aquariums big enough to house schools of at least 20 of them. Titocharic species orange, this micro tetra comes from the Rio Pachitea as well, and could well be Titocharyx tambopataensis. These tiny fish are somewhat sensitive to ship and easily die if the water gets too hot or ammonia levels spike. For these reasons, they are not exported often. Once settled in, they are really interesting with very bright blue and yellow colors and constant motion. This Brukonop species from the Rio Cura is one of two fish in this genus we'll show today. Brucanops are larger characins that often occur near rapids in many rivers of South America. They are strong swimmers and quite territorial amongst each other. They are spectacular fish to observe in nature and equally beautiful as large groups in the aquarium. This species, with white and red color in the fins, comes from the Rio Curua and occurs in some of the same habitats as Epistogramma colandri and the famous Rio Cura corridoras in this tributary of the Upper Shingu. Check out our Kurua video linked in the description. This Brucanops from Rondonia is my personal favorite. This species has a golden yellow body and deep orange red fins. These are high energy fish that devour any food available in the water column and in nature they feed on any insect that touches the surface of the water. These fish need good oxygen saturation and strong filters as well as frequent water changes. In a large group, in an aquarium of 200 gallons or 800 liters, they get along very well and make good community fish for larger cichlids such as Geophagus, Guyanacara or Equidens. They are ideal characins for cichlid keepers and it is unfortunate that they do not transport well and rarely get exported. Nathocharax steindachneri is an odd-looking characin that is actually closer related to the Acestrohinchus barracudas than most of our aquarium tetras. Their maximum size is just 2 inches or 5 centimeters, but they have a very large head with long teeth. Most of the time they swim in the upper part of the aquarium and feed on insect larvae at the surface in nature. They get along well with each other and fish large enough not to be considered prey. 
Despite the fact that this fish is widely distributed in the Amazon, we rarely see it exported from Brazil or Colombia. Munchausia simulata is yet another tetra that has been known to science for a hundred years, but it is rarely exported. This species is similar to Munchausia agnese, but while those occur in tiny rainforest streams with very shallow water, Munchausia simulata occurs in larger habitats that has a more silvery and yellow base color. Like many Munchausia species, they are very hardy and somewhat aggressive tetras that make good community fish for smaller cichlids and thrive in big groups in larger aquaria. This group from the Rio Pachitea acts as dither fish for our next cichlid breeding project that we can hopefully showcase here in the near future. Hufeso brucon notidanos is one of the tetras we introduced in the first new tetra video, way back in the July of 2021, which now has around 25,000 views. The Rio Tapajos populations of Hufeso brucon notidanos come in both a red form and a yellow form. This notidanos comes from Rondonia and is one of the most expensive and rare species of all the 85 tetras we have shown today. Adult males have bright red eyes, a blue horizontal line and bright yellow upper portion of the body. They are unfortunately very difficult to find and for now remain nearly impossible to get with an accordingly high price tag. I hope you enjoyed Tetra Guide 5. Please make sure to subscribe and share this video. Hopefully the channel continues to grow and we can bring some more content from nature in the next video.